But anyway, uh, normally I'd start off with them. Uh, how, how, how did you get to meet him? When, when was that? Oh, I don't remember the... I have a intentional... So anyway, there was a time when the president, I think uh, the very first time was when I joined his uh, state visit to Vietnam. Oh, yes, okay. uh, the Department of Trade and Industry uh, was lining up a group of people mm -hmm. to accompany the president mm -hmm. in his uh, promotion mm -hmm. of our country to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And I was invited by DTI mm -hmm. because at that time I was uh, active with the Chamber of Furniture Industries of the Philippines, mm -hmm. although I was never a furniture exporter or manufacturer. So I was with CFIP mm -hmm. because I was very much involved in helping promote our country's products mm -hmm. and services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they invited me to join. Mm -hmm. And then, so I said yes, and then we were invited to go to Malacanang mm -hmm. for the briefing. Oh, okay. That usually prior, to, like usually they, they do that a few weeks before yes, the actual yes, yes. visit. So I went to Malacanang one afternoon, and then I realized that it was just a short list of people, mm -hmm. and the names were very impressive. Mm -hmm. All the big businessmen in the Philippines mm -hmm. were included in the trip. And so we had a br briefing, and that was my first close encounter with the president. Oh, he came to the briefing? Yeah, he himself? was there at the briefing because yeah. we were only like 20 people. Oh, it's a very because, small group. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just wanted to limit it to the that number like 20 to 25 mm -hmm. so I was so like I, I was overwhelmed <laughs> okay. with that, with that thought <laughs> that and I was the only female oh yeah and so I was like so overwhelmed mm -hmm. and so intimidated by the group mm -hmm. but they were all nice and they were like uh, like good friends of the president mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like so I was just uh, sitting there and observing mm -hmm. because I was a fan and he, <laughs> and there I was mm -hmm. face to face with him oh, yeah. and what so after like? yeah first time to see yeah I was uh, like <laughs> I was starstruck and then when I shook his hand after the briefing mm -hmm. I shook his hand I stood up and all of us shook his hand mm -hmm. when I got home I told my husband mm -hmm. I don't want to take a bath. I don't want to wash my hands for five hours. And so he struck me as someone approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, there was this like wall. Mm -hmm. And like he commanded respect. Mm -hmm. And although he was very pleasant, mm -hmm. but I felt like he was serious in his purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear why we were going to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so, um, a few days later, I found mm -hmm. myself sitting in the plane mm -hmm. with this big businessman. Mm -hmm. I was seated beside Peter Zilic. And then, we were all in black business suits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, FBR's protocol people were so strict. They were so thorough when mm -hmm. it comes to what we were going to say, mm -hmm. we were given some like basic uh, Vietnamese, you know, yeah, say hello, or hi, or yeah. something like that. And so we were, we were all, we, we all looked so dignified. <laughs> so we landed in Vietnam like I think 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then we went to this building, mm -hmm. uh, historic building, who was supposed to be the Department of Trade and Industry or something like that, mm -hmm. equivalent. Mm -hmm. And then their officer was in Chinelas, in Carzucillo, oh. <laughs> in Sando. <laughs> and we were all As looking at each they, other. Yeah, we were so presentable, dignified. dignified. And, mm -hmm. and so we were like, Ooh. And then we had a brief, we waited for a while because I think the counterpart of the DTI secretary was, was still dressing up and mm -hmm. to look more comfortable. Who was the DTI secretary then? The, the time? Bauer? No, I think Secretary Bautista. Oh, Cesar Bautista. Bautista. Okay. Yeah. So that was my very first time that I joined the business delegation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I kept on joining and Already? I became like a constant 
fixture in his travels. Mm. So that eventually evolved into Team Philippines, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. We formed uh, Team Philippines. I oh, you think. Did? Yeah, mm. I was part of that um, original group mm. together with Apocholo Jacinto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because during the time of FBR, the businessman accompanying him became like uh, close. Mm -hmm. And it was not like just, oh, sama kayo lahat. They mm -hmm. just limited to a certain group. Yeah. And like we were only like 25 people who mm -hmm. were always traveling with the president, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was such a joy to you know, to watch him work and do those Why things. So? Um, I did not have any big business to promote mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. but like. But you were there because of the I, furniture. No, I was never. Already? No, the president thought that I was. Mm -hmm. A furniture maker mm -hmm. or exporter. Mm -hmm. No, I willingly joined. I didn't mind spending my own time, money, mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. As soon as I received notices from the DTI or the FA that the president would be traveling to another country, no matter how busy I was, I would drop everything. He was my top priority. Uh, and my colleagues in the business, those that were joining, we all share the, the same uh, feelings and okay. thoughts because with him, we felt important. Okay. We felt that uh, we were doing something good for the country mm -hmm. by just being there with mm -hmm. him. That was the motivation to, to, to be yes, part of... Yes, at least for me because I did not have any personal agenda. Mm -hmm. I was not promoting a specific product. Mm -hmm or services that mm -hmm. I wanted to sell to that country. Mm -hmm. I was just there because I felt good. I, It may sound petty, but I really felt that by just being there was already something good that I was doing for the country mm -hmm. because I've seen how sincere he was mm -hmm. in doing his job as president of the Philippines. So I felt the least that I could do is show my support mm -hmm. because there was sincerity. Uh, I felt that he was really sincerely and, com and sincerely and he was very committed. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen that during the, during the travels. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't mind uh, being there and I felt proud to mm -hmm. be there. Mm -hmm. Especially, mm, and there were some like, very emotional moments. Mm -hmm. Like one a good example was when we were in Australia. Mm -hmm. There was a Filipino uh, meeting, which mm -hmm. was standard during his visits and in all presidents' visits, to meet communities. with the Filipino mm -hmm. community. We went. We were brought to a, it looks like a Colosseum because it's so big mm -hmm. and it was full of people, Filipinos wow. waving flags and all. So the after, so the, when the president uh, stepped on the stage, of course there was a thunder of applause, mm -hmm. and so we were the businessmen. We were just standing on the right side, mm -hmm. and then people were so happy. They were ecstatic. Some were crying. Mm -hmm. uh, I think because it's not about President Ramos alone, mm -hmm. but he represented our country. Mm -hmm. So those people living in Australia mm -hmm. probably felt that he is home. Mm -hmm. He is, he represents our mm -hmm. country. And so they, they felt the longing mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, it, 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 yes, mm -hmm. it was a mixed emotion. Mm -hmm. And some of us really got very eyed mm -hmm. because we really felt their enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. We felt their love. Mm -hmm and we felt their pride and joy mm -hmm. of being a Filipino. Mm -hmm. Because even before I started joining President Ramos Travels, I was already traveling a lot, mm -hmm. uh, attending exhibitions, yeah, trade, trade visits, yeah, mm -hmm. helping to promote. And I felt, after a few years of FVR's presidency, I felt the difference in how people perceived us at least we Filipinas. Mm -hmm. Because before he became president, uh, people, maybe not 
not all the time, mm -hmm. but I've experienced that people had that preconceived notion about Filipinos, mm -hmm. that we were poor, mm -hmm. that we're a country of domestic helpers. Mm -hmm. And so, several times when, I, when I'm when i traveling, I would be at the airport and they would direct me to the line where the domestic helpers are. Mm -hmm. But a few years of... You certainly felt bad about oh, that. Oh yeah, definitely. A few years after President Ramos term, like maybe two, three years, mm -hmm. I felt some difference and say, oh, they would talk about FDR, the foreigners, or mention him, mm -hmm. and they would say, oh, and they would like do that and probably and trying to, him. <laughs> yeah, I bury him. And so, and then their, their respect for our country, I felt that it like became at least you know it mm -hmm. it, it leveled up. Mm -hmm. It's respect, not esteem yeah the respect went yeah, mm -hmm. and then even Filipinos became more proud mm -hmm. to be Filipinos. Mm -hmm. There was a sense of pride, mm -hmm. and like it renewed our like what do you call it nationalism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or belief in ourselves. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and then what oh, yeah, he inspired people. Yes, I I think. Um, he inspired people because he's the leader. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are certain requirements or qualities mm -hmm. that a leader of a country mm -hmm. should have and must have. And that whatever he does, whatever he says, whatever the people sees, mm -hmm. kind of, it has an effect, eh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that we take seriously mm -hmm. when when we see how how uh, how our leader work, how he carries himself, mm -hmm. what he does mm -hmm. to uplift our country. Mm -hmm. It it affects all of us, mm -hmm. and that kind of affect the way we think of ourselves, mm -hmm. the way we think of our country. Mm -hmm. It if it's good, then it inspires us. Mm -hmm. It motivates us. Mm -hmm. It renews our commitment to help our country mm -hmm. improve for the better. Mm -hmm. That's something he did? Uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah, and my colleagues share the same thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, once in a while, we, we get together mm -hmm. and we talk about the times that we were traveling with FAR, mm -hmm. and we all felt the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me what brought you to putting together what is now known as uh, Team Team Philippines? <laughs> yeah, after, uh, I think we organized that a few months before the uh, term of FAR was, um, was ending. Mm -hmm. I think a few, okay. we were in Europe mm -hmm. and we wanted to continue mm -hmm. what he had started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did not want it to go to waste mm -hmm. so because um, we weren't sure who was going to be the next president no. if and if that leader would share the same uh, passion and commitment mm -hmm. to help to, to, to promote our country. Mm -hmm. So we thought that it would be good to preserve that vision, mission, mm -hmm. or whatever you call it, mm -hmm. that intense desire to promote our country's mm -hmm. trade and investment. That's why we formed that group. Mm -hmm. It was not a political group. It was not meant to benefit any one of us. Mm -hmm. I think it was just mainly to help promote our country, mm -hmm. country's trade and investment, mm -hmm. uh, something that FDR had started. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Tell me about the schedule. <laughs> schedule. I, well, oh, you, 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 um, uh, this first one that you attended, Camo, you came in at five o'clock. Yeah. You, were, yeah. you never mentioned yeah. uh, how you got to your hotel, right? Apparently, you just guy, you, you guys just yeah. went straight through to the yeah. first engagement. <laughs> FV, well, uh, after FVR, I also had the uh -huh. uh, honor and privilege of joining in some of the trips of the. Uh, presidents. Succeeding presidents, but uh, FAR's schedule was really grueling. 
and every I was general I'm basically thin mm -hmm. and every time I came home I would lose like five pounds three pounds and for a thin person to lose three five pounds mm -hmm. that's huge yeah, yeah. yeah his schedule was really we were always on the go it's like we would traverse Europe mm -hmm. in like five days it's like yeah. half day here like 20 hours there yeah. and it's like that mm -hmm. and it was really grueling mm -hmm. It's good that I was still a lot younger, <laughs> but my my colleagues were already like yeah, some of them were yeah, <laughs> yeah like attorney Sigon <laughs> I was like we would arrive in one country say like three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. dead winter. Mm -hmm. It's like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes, he was like that, <laughs> and and during long haul flights, mm -hmm. of course, we try to. Uh, make use of the time when they switch off the lights mm -hmm. in the plane. So, of course, we would try to yeah. doze off. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, bago pa lang kami na iitlip, then all of a sudden, they're going to switch on the lights, and here he comes, and he would, like, talk about nung so soldier pa siya. You know, he would... But we were all always enthusiastic mm -hmm. to hear him talk. Mm -hmm. He just affect all of us in a positive way. Mm -hmm. We didn't mind him bothering our sleep. <laughs> he would walk around mm -hmm. and he would talk about um, his experiences mm -hmm. um, that pertains to that particular country that we were going to. Mm -hmm. It was not like some out of this world conversation. It was always deliberate. Mm -hmm. He was always imparting some good values. Mm -hmm. Like he would say, when he was still a shoulder and he was with General Magno mm -hmm. and uh, they tried to sleep like you know because they did not have time to sleep long hours mm -hmm. so he would say that they would like what do you call that cut catnaps, catnaps mm -hmm. and that would rejuvenate him so he was like indirectly telling us mm -hmm. you don't have to sleep long mm -hmm. Oh, you already took a nap for 15 minutes. So and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so it was really grueling. And many times when we came home, I suffered from withdrawal syndrome <laughs> because they would like wake us up at 12 midnight mm -hmm. or 2 o'clock. One, wala yang oras. Ano yung luggage call. <laughs> yeah, luggage call. <laughs> and those kind of things. Para kaming nasa military. Mm -hmm. Nisip ko ganito pala pag ang um, boss eh, military man. Mm -hmm. like, oops, mm -hmm. hindi pwedeng bagal, bag, babagal, bagal. Mm -hmm. It was really, uh, we did not waste any time, any moment. Walang sayang. Walang sayang. And his people would like squeeze in a lot of schedule in like two days. So mm -hmm. we would like hop from one country to another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... Maybe that's what he really is. He he didn't like to waste any time. But and, I, I think he was also wasn't he also? Well, he called himself the country's number one salesman. No? Diba? Yes. Uh, and for good reason. Did Did you get yeah. the feeling that he was always in a hurry or in a rush? Na I mean, let's let's get this business going. Let's get this ventures uh, coming into the country? Um, I didn't feel that he was in a hurry, but uh, literally, but I felt that he knew where he wanted to bring our country to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he, it, it felt like very natural to him, but I, I, I really appreciated his focus and we really felt that he was sincere. Mm -hmm. It was not just for show that he would travel and just take the opportunity to mm -hmm. gallivant in mm -hmm. another country. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's one of the reasons why we really put up uh, Team Philippines. Because mm -hmm. we really felt the pres FBR's commitment to help promote our trade and investment. Mm -hmm. So when he said that he's the country's number one salesman, that's true no argument there and i think it's really like that mm -hmm. because the the president is the leader mm -hmm. and so he best represent our country mm -hmm. so 
he sells himself as a good person, as a statesman, mm -hmm. someone that commands respect, mm -hmm. admiration, mm -hmm. and trust. Mm -hmm. And it follows that people, uh, businessmen, would want to come here. Hey, mm -hmm. they have a good leader. Maybe they have something good to offer. Mm -hmm. Let's look. Maybe we can do business there. Mm -hmm. So there's trust. Mm -hmm. There is confidence, I think. And there's stability. I think for a businessman to come to the Philippines, mm -hmm. those elements should be present mm -hmm. at first. Yeah, you, you kind of yeah. want to know what the environment is when yeah. you're going to do business, right? Yes, and you, you want to know what kind of leader mm -hmm. do they have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he's the one that, that dictates mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the direction mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you cannot like lay down the foundation without the president being uh, in unison with, mm -hmm. with, with, with the business people's mm -hmm. goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So seeing him promoting and we, with all commitment and sincerity, promoting mm -hmm. our country and inviting investors to come, that, 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 that's mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm not promoting my, my business, mm -hmm. You, you you see your leader doing that, then the least that you could do is like give your support, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that's but, how I felt. Mm -hmm. but you guys, the, the Team Philippines, the business delegation, was uh, an inherent part of the, of the official yes. uh, delegation. You yes. Were you were with, uh, with Tony Boyko Wanko, Don, uh, Don yeah. Antonio uh, Florendo, Andres Soriano. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, at the same time, he, he, he put you guys to work, didn't he? I mean, he wanted to yes. sit down with your counterparts, network. Yes, we did about, that. Uh, tell me it about that. It was not just going there and having fun. Mm -hmm. We were really working. Mm -hmm. And they, they also require us to make a report, to submit after the meetings. Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> to, to make a report. Uh -huh. It's like a feedback and like if you met with like your counterpart okay. then to give DTI and then DTI would send someone knocking on your hotel rooms mm -hmm. to collect that piece of paper because mm -hmm. the president was asking for that. So there is like a like a test paper or it's like a teacher. Okay, mm -hmm. you came here, so what did you do? It was you know yeah. so and, and yet, who who you met with, what you discussed, I mean, yeah, potential it was, for business. Yeah, it? something like that. They just wanted to know if there is any progress, mm -hmm. if there is something good that's coming out of these travels. Mm -hmm. So so as business people, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, we really have to work. Mm -hmm. We didn't join here to just sit down and mm -hmm. take pictures. Mm -hmm. so. People said that, oh, no, no. Well, well, the initial, during the initial trips, um, katinang paan itong si Tabaco, panayang biyahe at lahat, you know? The, the, the initial accusation was that it was a junket. It was just gallivanting, oh, yeah. But obviously it wasn't. It wasn't. I was very much aware of those criticisms. Mm -hmm. And then I realized people criticize just for the heck of criticizing mm -hmm. because they, they didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. They thought that Junket means libre lahat, mm -hmm. that all those people were spending the government's money mm -hmm. and just traveling mm -hmm. because they didn't know, they did not join. They, they should join mm -hmm. so that they would know mm -hmm. what the president was doing. Mm -hmm. So but you guys were spending your money. We right? were, and that they didn't know, mm -hmm. that we were spending our own money mm -hmm. and that we were spending much more than if you would travel to that country by yourself mm -hmm. because we were like um, I don't know how true but my colleague said we had to spend more because we were subsidizing the trip of those people that could not like ask their bosses to pay for their trips like say mm -hmm. I don't know how true but maybe the um, the journalists or the, the yeah mm -hmm. that that's what they said. But we didn't mind. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think that even my own friends thought that 
I kept on joining because it was free. You enjoyed the vacation. Yeah, it was like yeah. It's you like didn't if, if know you were having like a test every time. <laughs> yeah, and traveling for five days to visit like how many countries mm -hmm. and not having enough sleep. It was like that's not a vacation. That's not a vacation. And then I would tell people, if you wanna lose weight, you join FVRs. <laughs> state visits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if you eat a lot, you would really lose weight because mm -hmm. we were always on the go. Mm -hmm. We were always on the go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then his protocol people are very thorough. They don't want late. So if President Ramos is expected to board the plane at 8 o'clock, we would be sitting already in the plane at 4 o'clock in the morning, okay. waiting for him, or 5 o'clock in the morning, very early. Because they wanted everything to be like hours organized. Ahead. Yes, minimum of two hours. So it was not really vacation, but we didn't mind. Mm -hmm. And because we were proud of what we were doing, even if we would just clap our hands after his speeches, mm -hmm. it was something that has a, I don't know, it has a, there is a deep appreciation in my heart for what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I felt proud and honored to be a part of that. But it did generate quite substantial amounts yes. of business. Yes. I mean, you know, I mean, just the networking alone. I mean, that yeah. you were able to establish a connection yes, because for future yeah. endeavors. Like. Because we all know that most big businesses, most transactions are not done in two minutes. Uh, it's like yeah. you shake hands and that's it. Mm -hmm. Prior to the meetings, the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Department of Trade and Industry were already laying the groundwork for the meetings. Mm -hmm. So it was a long process. Mm -hmm. And then then the business people would meet and change, and then it would still be another process. They would like get to know each other right. and yeah, about the business, mm -hmm. of course, due diligence. Uh -huh. So it was not like, okay, we all went to Vienna and then we came home with five billion dollars worth of business. It was not like that. Mm -hmm. And people did not know. And that's why, you know, lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, they did not appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But like there were certainly a lot of businesses that were generated. Mm -hmm. Like what I've said, even if the business transactions were not probably fully documented mm -hmm. by the government, mm -hmm by laying the foundation that the Philippines mm -hmm. is a good place to do business, mm -hmm. I'm sure there were a lot of businessmen who came here mm -hmm. and did their thing mm -hmm. without the government's mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that was very important. Mm -hmm. And I believe that our country benefited from his mm -hmm. leadership. Mm -hmm. There's no way mm -hmm. that they would say that his travels were just like junkets mm -hmm. or a waste of people's money. Mm -hmm. That's unfair. Mm -hmm. Where were where was where was where was the Philippine economy? Where was where was Philippine business when he started? When he started, uh, there was some. Um, yes, <laughs> we we started with some negative. Um, what do you call that? Because like I don't know how how we survive with like sitting in the office, mm -hmm. in total darkness. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, uh, Filipinos, we, we are very resilient. But when President um, Ramos um, started his term, there was renewed enthusiasm and hope that things would be better. Mm -hmm. And he was able to address that. We didn't have any more brownouts mm -hmm. and all those things. And perception is very important. Mm -hmm. We were again perceived as a stable um, mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. politically, economically. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of spearheaded mm -hmm. the any ac economic activity. Mm -hmm. So there was like, unfortunately, when he was about to end his term, there was this Asian financial crisis, no, which was not seven. his own doing. Yeah. 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 Oh. But like prior to that, <clears throat> we were doing very well. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot say 100% because there's no perfect economy. Okay. No, right, per right, that's, right. that's beyond our physical, you know, being and mm -hmm. human capacity mm -hmm. to 
to run this country 100% mm. perfectly mm. well. But he was doing very well. Oh. And Filipinos, like, we were happy with him. We, we just have um, the highest of praise for the president. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, since you mentioned the Asian uh, financial crisis of 97, uh, the observation was that we weren't as badly hit yes, as yes. Thailand, for example, or the, 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 yes. some of the other countries yeah. in Southeast Asia, because he was able to establish strong fundamentals. Yes, and the perception is very important mm -hmm. because we were perceived again as a country with a strong leader mm -hmm. in a good way. Mm -hmm. And people did not pull out of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. they, they, most of them stayed. And because, and to begin with, it was not his own doing. Uh, on a personal level, our business, of course, we suffered a little bit yeah. from the foreign exchange friends. Yeah. Yeah. But the demand was still there because <coughs> The in, in business, there must be a level of confidence mm -hmm. that things are, um, what do you call that? That there's uh, stability. Yeah. So that's very important. Even if bis the, the businessmen have, say, their business is doing well, but if there's a feeling of instability, then they will like stop expanding. Mm -hmm stop expanding and they will like the investors will not come mm -hmm. and they will like wait mm -hmm. let's the wait the first edge. let's the see mm -hmm. but like during that crisis business was still like i cannot say booming mm -hmm. but it continued mm -hmm. to grow mm -hmm. yeah and the effect was not as bad mm -hmm. and we were able to recover in 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 just you know, in, in, in a short period of time, we were able to recover. So there's truth in the, in the how, how do they call it, steady eddy? Oh, yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah, I mm -hmm. think uh, I wish he could be our president for life. But he had only six years. Eh? Yeah, after, I think there was a clamor for him to run again. Yeah. But the Constitution had some yes. limits. And then I remember I saw him at a uh, like a business event in one of the hotels. Mm -hmm. And people were like clamoring for him to run again. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, uh, tell them that I'm already 72. I think he was 72 <laughs> years old at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. But like, how, he, well, how we wish that he could be our president for life mm -hmm. or the next uh, presidents had the same qualities that sincerity mm -hmm. and commitment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not just uh, to catapult them into power mm -hmm. or you know so we we felt that way with him mm -hmm. that he provided us with a sense of his ability that everything would be okay mm -hmm. and he is the captain of the ship and then he is the okay. one guiding us mm -hmm. to the right path to mm -hmm. the right direction so yeah, he, in fact, he used that analogy as well, mm -hmm. the ship mm -hmm. of state. Yeah, okay. yeah. Did, were you, so I, I, I guess you were part of the support groups that, yes, sir, please run again. There was, a, yeah, all there was of an us. attempt to amend that. All of us, yes, but like the time was very short mm -hmm. to, yeah. Mm -hmm. But how just... We, we just wish that he could be our president for life. <laughs> <laughs> or someone similar to him. Or least. someone <laughs> at least 90% like no, him. So you weren't really with the furniture no, uh, business? No. What, 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 so, so what business association uh, the, the very you, that, that you were... That, or that, what, time, uh, you, yeah, you that time, well, I was a director, I, I was a 
member of the board of directors of the Chamber of Furniture Industries of the mm -hmm. Philippines. I was also a partner of the Philippine Exporters uh, Confederation. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, I the company Trade Development Publishing. That time, mm -hmm. I was publishing a very thick directory on uh, Philippine manufacturer and exporters. Mm -hmm. So I was running it not for money. I was doing it mainly to help promote our country. Mm -hmm. So. I was doing what the president was doing on a bigger scale. That's why I, I wholeheartedly yeah, joined. There's continuity in the business relationship. Mm -hmm. So there's like, he, he's able to establish a good like uh, business cooperation with the other countries. Mm -hmm. So you guys meet them when you go there? Yes, and, and they, they, they come, come here. here you... Yes. Yeah, there's reciprocity and and that I think that was that is also crucial in helping the economy grow mm -hmm. because when they come here they also look for businesses mm -hmm. or what industry to invest in. Mm -hmm. So his trips actually also paved the way for those people to feel comfortable to come here to mm -hmm. send their their team here. <laughs> But he did, but yun nga, no? kung wala yung environment for business, kung hindi fertile yung, mm -mm, yun, yun, mm -mm. yung, yung ground for mm -mm. the economy to grow. Because he did have to break the cartels and yeah. the monopolies. Mm -hmm. you know? so mm -hmm. how, how did uh, business people like yourself, for example, take to that kind of uh, action uh, taken by the president? I think that that uh, only affected probably just a few, mm -hmm. but like in general, it had like positive effects, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because as a president, mm -hmm. he had to do what he had to do. Mm -hmm. This is good. For, it, it's something good for the majority of the people, mm -hmm. and that in the long run, is actually good. So, but so it's not something that's controversial mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. yeah, ano, no? yeah, open yeah. opportunities. Eh? Yeah, opportunities. Ano term na ginagamit niya? Level the playing field. It levels the playing field. So like the business now, there is now opportunity even for those people who are not oligarchs. or mm -hmm. no. So it levels the playing field. Yeah. So what about the ordinary fellow. <laughs> so, um, all right. You weren't too happy about him ending his term, ano? <laughs> you, you no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Or for someone yeah. to How we wish that he would be able to continue what he had started. Mm -hmm. Not because, no political thing here, mm -hmm. but it's just he was doing very well. Mm -hmm. He was doing really, really something good for the country. Mm -hmm. So we just, I think any any person would want something good to continue mm -hmm. rather than face another round of uncertainty, instability. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason. Because we, we've already seen him uh, work. Mm -hmm. We've seen his dedication in, and his commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we wanted that to continue. Mm -hmm. There was some apprehension mm -hmm. of what will happen again. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You stayed connected over the years with him? How, how, uh, how, have, you, <laughs> how have you kept you know, well, uh, in touch? Right, well, after he, his term finished, there was like a crisis also. It's like... Um, business crisis mm -hmm. and it had some effect also in our business mm -hmm. so I had to like focus on that mm -hmm. and since he was no longer traveling with the business group mm -hmm. of course I did not get any more um, notices from the Department of Trade and Industry so so there was no more opportunity for me to see him as much as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I just did not want to show up at his doorstep. Hey, because I didn't want to be very pretentious or 
presumptuous that you know so I didn't want to bother them and mm -hmm. uh, but I was always like wondering how he was mm -hmm. how Mrs. Ramos was mm -hmm. uh, oh, were you able to establish also a uh, Mrs. relationship Ramos? with Mrs. Ramos? Yeah, he was also traveling with the yeah, president, but he she was very unassuming. She was very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had some close, um, like some very nice conversations with her mm -hmm. at their house in mm -hmm. Alabang. Mm -hmm. One time they threw a dinner for the group of businessmen. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we were like thirty, mm -hmm. and I was seated beside the first lady, mm -hmm. and of course I took it as an opportunity to interview her about their love life, <laughs> how, where they met, mm -hmm. how they mm -hmm. met. Mm -hmm. So, and she she's a very nice person. Mm -hmm. And she strikes me as someone very humble, mm -hmm. very unassuming. Mm -hmm. She's not like the first lady na parang princesa. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's very low-key, mm -hmm. and I, I like her a lot. And the, the silent part. Yeah. And but even that, that she's silent, you feel that she's a strong woman, mm -hmm. that she's not like someone just, uh, you know, she has her own credential and, you know, she she holds her own. And I have very high respect for her also. Mm -hmm. And she did not use her position to make herself very popular mm -hmm. or, you know. Mm -hmm. So she didn't do all those like fancy things. And she was just helping in her own way mm -hmm. and without much fanfare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Meron bang special, memorable moment or memory that you have of FBR? You know, you always remember him by. Um, I have a lot of, uh, well, I only had like good memories of him, mm -hmm. but like every time I think of him, mm -hmm can't help but think also of our of my colleagues collectively because we traveled as a group mm -hmm. but like one of the things that um, I remember about FER was like one time we were traveling to to Europe and I think we're, we're going to Canada and mm -hmm. it was very cold and we're ex and or and one time we were traveling to Russia, the same country, and he said the same thing. He he woke us up, he went to the economy section where the business people were, mm -hmm. and he said, um, you have to be like physically strong mm -hmm. so that you, when you face your task, then you would be like, you would be able and you have the strength and the right frame of mind mm -hmm. he said so he told us to exercise and slow so he like i was looking at him i was like just observing of course every time he opened his mouth mouth we were all like really all eyes and ears on him and so i was very young the times like i was in my 30s and i was looking at him and said okay this guy would live up to a hundred because like I was like in my like uh, I was young and it's like he knew how to take care of himself physically mentally because he was giving us that like words of wisdom how to take care of ourselves so that we, we are pre always prepared to go to a battle so that's one of the things that I learned from him that you have to take care of yourself physically, mentally, mm -hmm. to prepare yourself for anything that will, that will come your way. Mm -hmm. And then, um, he is very jolly, very jolly. Needless to say, he's very witty. So, and and but he he is never like shallow. The things, even his jokes, are something that you that that will teach you something about mm. life. Mm. So, I I only have really high respect for him, and so and like I didn't mind 
traveling and leaving my young children behind <laughs> to join his trips because I really felt like he represented our country. <laughs> and the least that I could do is lend my support, <laughs> show my support. I am getting he was like mentor. Was he also fatherly? <laughs> um, to all of us, yes, because like he really commanded respect. Although he was very much very approachable, but like he always maintained. I think it's natural. He maintained that parang parang very dignified siya. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in front of him, there is like a feeling that hey. I have to be dignified also. I have to know what I'm saying, what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's like a father that will say, Oh, Ani, ali ka dito. Ganun. So he's like, he likes, it's not a lecture, but he likes to impart words of wisdom. And you know, so for me, he's just a perfect kind of leader. I'll end it there. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much for your... I hope I did not bore you. Oh, no, no. <laughs>